Let's look at an example of an inner product other than the dot product. It will be closely related to the dot product. We'll look at a few this more, uh, more dissimilar example was later. But for now, suppose you have been taking observations over a long time period. So say 50 years and now you want to use those observations to do something. For example, Maybe you want to do a regression. And regression, we now know, involves a dot products. Let's put a wrinkle on this, however, because you've been performing these observations so long, your newer observations are more reliable than your older observations. Because, for example, improvements in technology have improved your ability to make reliable measurements. For a situation like that, we have the weighted dot product. Suppose, for example, you have 10,000 observations. Then these are stored in 10,000 by one vector vectors and the usual dot product would look like this. However, let's make the following declarations. The first 5,000 observations are only three-fifths as reliable <coughs> as 
as the other observations. We define a new inner product that looks basically like the old one, except that these older observations have a three fifths in front of them to reflect the fact that they are less reliable and should not be influencing the sum as much in front of the remaining observations we'll put a one. And obviously you can modify this example to fit your needs. Maybe the first 1,000 observations are even worse. Maybe they're only one-fifth as reliable. So you have one-fifths, then you have three-fifths, then you have ones. And in this way, you get to control how much each each observation matters. Going back a ways now to our document vector example, um, I said in that lecture that you don't want to bother looking at words like and and the and she. You only want to use genre signifiers, but with the weighted dot product, you could look at every word. You'd just weight words like the, which you don't think are very important, by a very small amount. 